Hey guys, welcome back to Bait and Tackle. <clears throat> Today, I think we're gonna be doing some dusting. I wanna try some different colors. One of my buddies I did some colors for, I did some purple with a uh, silver flake, like a minnow silver, and I also used like some chartreuse. So I kinda wanted to use that color combo and then maybe dust a couple molds and just see what we come up with. So let's do it. So I've rearranged the shop a little bit, guys, and I don't know if you noticed that or not, but I moved the microwave from down here to up above. And I was having issues with hitting the edges of the tops of the Pyrex cups and then dumping over. So I had one mistake, burned myself, and I won't do that again. <laughs> so right now I'm just taking some of the clear plastic that I had laying around, and it's it's got a little bit of a yellow tint, but it won't it won't be like that when we uh, cook it up but I'm just trying to break up the plastic into pieces just so it melts better. And I've had some issues in the past with um, when you're doing, when you're remelting, you know, cut, cut it into smaller pieces. It'll, it'll definitely cook a lot better and you won't get any, you, you will get minimal mushrooming. I know nobody likes to make mushrooms out of plastic, even if it, if, even if it is remelt plastic and I'm just using a big knife to cut it up because I don't have a big enough um, I don't have a big enough exacto to do this with so I'm just cutting it up with a big knife and just ripping it apart so we'll get this heated up and I always use a little bit of heat stabilizer just so then that way it doesn't get too hot and it doesn't burn so go ahead and heat this up and then we'll come back and do some skin pours Okay guys, so I got my plastic heated up. It's a little bit more yellow than I want it to be, but we're gonna go ahead and just try to pour it anyway. The molds that we're gonna pour today are some Angling AI 4-inch swim baits, and we're gonna be doing some Epic Puds. So, love these molds. Epic Bay molds are great. AI molds are great too. I really like both of them. So let's just go ahead and see how this plastic pours. I may need to have to pour, I may have to, to make some more plastic, but I don't, I don't know, it might turn out okay. It's just a skin pour, so it's nothing complicated. I start at the anal fin back here, and work your way forward, and make sure you get enough plastic to cover the whole thing, because you don't want any gaps in your skin. And you want to be careful with air bubbles too. You don't want any air bubbles in your skin. So, same thing with AI. Start back here, towards the back, towards the tail. Let it roll down. Just be very careful, guys, because this is very extremely not plastic. Just take caution in what you're doing. And I like to pour over this. This. Uh, cookie sheet just so then that way I've got something for the plastic to catch on and I can reuse it. Nice even skin pours. So I'm going to go ahead and finish these up and then let them cool off. i got to peel the extra plastic off and then we can do the dusting part. Okay guys, we're back. I got all of the molds trimmed out, so I got all the excess plastic off of them. So we're ready to go, and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually pick out some colors, and what I did was, I've got this eyeshadow palette from offline, and I've seen several people use this already, and of course, you know, my daughters are always after me to take this stuff from me. <laughs> but we're gonna use the black. 
and probably one of these off purples to go with the purple color that we're actually going to pour. That's the purple color that we're actually going to pour. So we're going to try this now and see, and I'm going to try to zoom in the best I can here, and I'll show you what we're going to do here. And I'll probably do the AI first, just so you get an idea of what we're going to do. And I got some of these new brushes that hopefully will be pretty good too. So we're going to start with the black. Okay. And we're going to first do the eye cavity. I like to do the eye cavity in black. Okay. And then we're probably going to go ahead and do the fin in black as well. And again, I, I don't know how much you can see me doing this, but uh, it's very simple. You're just using a small brush, either eyeliner, mic mica powder, anything that's really kind of a makeup product. It will it sticks in there pretty well. I'm gonna kind of get you a close up of this real quick, so you can see what I'm looking at. Okay, see that? So I did the. I did the fin and I did the eye socket. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and do some different colors on the. Um, we're going to go ahead and do some different colors on the the head and the fin part. So what I'm thinking is I'm thinking this purple for the head. And then what we'll do is we'll do a different color we'll do a different color for the uh, for the the gill plate so we'll probably do like this light pink would be cool so you just gotta very very carefully get the detail where you want it and again all this is is just a little little brush into my shadow so that's what you end up getting you got get you zoomed in here you got a pink on the gill and then I did this purple on the rest of the head and then when we when we do our layers we're gonna do when we do our layers, we're going to do silver on the bottom, like a silver, like a minnow. Then we're going to do a little lateral line of fluorescent or chartreuse. And then we're going to do this purple for the top layer and the tail. So let me go ahead and do some more. And actually, while, while I got you here, let's go ahead and do this, one of these epic bait molds, which is one of my favorites. And we'll go ahead and... Do the same thing here. Do the eye socket first. And the mica powder works really good if you buy the packets, which is what I normally do. But the eyeshadow, I feel like you can control it more because it's a little bit thicker. So it's a, it's a little bit easier to, to control. But a small brush doing this detail work is worth its weight in gold. I think I, f I found these brushes at Michael's and it's a specialty brush level two but it's very small it's a 12 slash zero angular shader it's called but like I said it's 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 your preference to what you get used to there's a little bit of blue in that black too I like that a little bit of sparkle so in this one we're gonna do the same thing except we're gonna do the pink right here on the outside of the gill plate this is what I like to do this is all in preference you can do the whole area if you want I usually don't and then I come down to this bottom part here just a little bit and then what I like to do is so I do that with the epic bait molds I do that where I just I kind of edge the the gill plate and then I go back in with the bigger, with the purple to do the head. And I go ahead 
and fill the rest in with purple. So these colors are going to be pretty close, but not not super close. You'll see the difference when the bait's made, I'm sure. So we'll finish this one up. I'll show you real quick. And then once this is done, I'm going to stop the camera and do the rest of them because it's going to take me a little bit of time to get the rest done. So, there you go. So, again, purple, and then I just did that little bit of pink around the gill plate. Black there, black in the eye socket, and then I like to do the fin too on these. This one I forgot, I keep forgetting that these ones have these back fins, but I'll just put some black on that too. Give a little bit of black on that, that back anal fin. Nothing crazy. And there you go. So that's one mold done. I'm going to go ahead and stop the camera and I'm going to go ahead and dust the rest of these. So that way we can get ready to pour. Okay guys, so we finished it up with the eyeshadow and the brush. I'm going to go ahead and put those away. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the hot plate out. And I'm also going to put these all back together so that I can get them so that I can get them clamped together and we can get going on the pouring. So I'm going to go ahead and start heating up some plastic and I'm going to get all these guys put together and we can start pouring our colors. So the first color we're going to do is the silver. So we'll be right back. Okay guys, so I got the fan on now, it's gonna get a little loud. But I've got my four molds on the on the hot plate. And I'm gonna go ahead and get the clamp. And I bought one of these clamps. This little it's a little pipe clamp kind of thing. Again, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tighten down too much. All it's for is just to keep keep them together so they heat up together and just keep everything tight so it doesn't come apart. So looking good right now. All the tails. Sometimes I have some problems with the tail uh, skin molds trying to come up and come out, which it might happen when it starts heating up a little bit more. But we got the silver heating up right now. And I'm checking it every little bit. And I'm also going to throw it, I'm going to throw it in the vacuum chamber just for a second, just to make sure that we got all the air out. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my sealed box just so that I can move around a little bit better. So we'll be back when I start pouring. So one thing I wanted to mention, I know it's really loud, <laughs> but one thing I wanted to mention to you guys was that I'm starting to use some actual Pyrex cups instead of the um, instead of the off-brand Anchor, what's it called? Anchor Hocking from Walmart. And the Pyrex ones definitely seem to pour better. They got better pourability. The nozzle, I think, the little spout is just got more control than I think the other ones do. Now, I'll still use the Walmart ones, so it's not like it's a waste of money. But the Pyrex ones are definitely the way to go. And they are more expensive, but definitely I would recommend them. Especially if you start out for the first time. So while we're pouring the silver, I want to make sure that I go ahead and start getting my second color ready. And I use a little butane lighter just to knock off some of the air bubbles on the top of the plastic. So we're ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and start pouring these. So we're going to do the silver and the bellies first. And again, these, these just, they have better pourability. So I may buy a lot more of these cups. I don't know if I'll get rid of the Walmart ones, but um, 
I'm going to definitely start slowly switching over to the Pyrex. Because it, this, it just feels better to thicker handle. Just like I said, easier portability. I feel like this works a lot better than the other cups. that I've learned throughout the time and experience and talking to other people, other bait makers, is these are ready and they join well when this, you do the spit test on this. So if it's hot enough where your spit evaporates, which it almost is, it's not sizzling quite yet, but it's close. And I only have this, the, the heat control on this hot plate, I only have it set to like 225 so just so you guys are aware that's what it takes to get them to mold well together with no cold cracks now these are skin pores anyway so it's really not going to make a difference but i gotta wait for that bottom layer to get tacky and we're heating up the chartreuse right now so i'll get that heated up and i'll get that vacuumed now it's starting to liquefy in the middle, which is good because I didn't cut this up into smaller pieces, which I probably should have. That's okay. We'll cut it up now. That's why I'm going to take it slow and not try to microwave, you know, three, four minutes at a time. We're doing, you know, a minute to two minute increments as, as the, at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this back in there. It's definitely not ready yet. But we're going to do this, this color next. We're going to do this uh, chartreuse. And it's got a little bit of, um, it's got a little bit of this GT22 from uh, Dip Your Car, and uh, I gotta be honest guys, this in the chartreuse is, wow, I mean it makes it just stand out like crazy. It's just like this white glittery substance, and I think it actually looks like a different color on the website, but I just had to order more because I'm kind of getting low. So. But I love using the dip your car um, hyper shifts and powders. They're they're awesome. I use them all the time. So I use a bluegill colored one, and I use that. My what I call like to call mermaid magic with purple. That comes out really well. And there's a, just a whole bunch of different colors. You can, gold is really awesome. But they all have a unique color shift ability, and they just they look outstanding. So I'll come back to you guys when we're ready to pour the chartreuse. Okay guys, so I got the got the chartreuse ready. We're gonna go ahead and pour it in. And I'm, I'm gonna try to get you guys a little bit of a different angle here. I'm gonna try to raise it up. And I'm gonna try to drop it down. There we go, that's a little bit better. Just so you guys can see what the heck I'm doing. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour a second there. Everything's set up pretty good so far, so it looks like we're good to pour this layer. Okay. It's good. I don't want it to go all the way down the tail, but just to come up that center line, I want it to come up right to the top of that hook slot. AI ones, there's, there's not a lot of 
not a lot of clearance. It's, it's a very slow wind thing, which is awesome. But um, for pourability, these epics are a lot, a lot easier to pour. So I come from the top like this on the AIs. back over top of that silver. So just just enough where it rolls over the other layer so it goes back on it. This way too if I hit the sides at all with this color, especially back further, it's not a big deal because if I'm pouring from the head I've got that. The head is, is all colored with that um, with that mica powder, so it's not a big deal. So that one I did a little bit too much, maybe. Let's see. I think we're okay. All right. So chartreuse is poured. We are going to go ahead and stop it here. I'm going to heat up the purple. Should have done that while I was doing that. And like I said, two minutes at a time to heat this stuff up. I'll get this out, get it heat up, hopefully the... And now, when I touch it with my wet finger, it sizzles. So I know that that's the perfect temperature. So I'm gonna let it sit. And I'm gonna go ahead, heat up purple, get it in the gas chamber, the degassing chamber, get all the bubbles out of it. And then we're gonna go ahead and pour the last layer. And then once we get done with that, we're going to heat it up for about, uh, I usually like to do about 10 minutes, leave the heat on, let everything mesh together well, and then I'll turn it off and let them cool just like this for like 30 minutes. So we're going to go ahead and do that process, but let's go ahead and get the purple heated up and we'll get everything rolling for the next one. Last layer I think is ready to go. I'm just going to hit it one more time with the butane torch just to make sure that all the air bubbles are gone stir here. We're going to go ahead and fill up the rest of the top off the rest of the baits. It's going to be a very, very cool color. I'm just hoping to have enough. For these, it's okay. Um, it's really easy to get rid of the excess color after the fact. So, really easy to trim off the excess. So, I'm not too worried about over things too much on the top. I, I'd rather over pour a little bit just so that way I got the tail filling all the way in between the tail and the body, I'm okay with that. So these are a little bit skinnier, they're probably going to use a lot less plastic.
we go. I had just enough to do that. So now, what we're going to do is if I see any air bubbles, I'm just going to hit it with the butane torch. Which I don't see any. Sometimes the edges of the the edges of the uh, skin pour get blended in better when I hit it with this as well. Sometimes the edges of the skin pour show. And I don't want that to happen. So just heat it up to make everything mesh well on the top. And we're good. We got these poured. I got everything smoothed out on the top. Again bit test they're hot I'm only at 225 on, on the dial so spit test is the way to go I can't remember who told me that who taught me that but kudos to them I forgot who it was if I did I mentioned their name right now but it works really well that's really helped me dial in temperature because I just recently switched to this hot plate which before I was using a before I was using a Presto, like a flat, a square one, I can't remember the name of it, but this is the Farberware and it's ceramic. So I just wanted to try and see if there was a difference between the two and see which one worked better. So far I like this better because it's longer and I can fit more baits on here. But again, so we're going to let these cook for about 10 minutes at that same temperature. 10 minutes is up. I'm going to cut the heat off and then I'm going to let it sit and cool down naturally for about 30 minutes. Then we'll come back, we'll demold, and then we'll, we'll probably soak them in a bath for a little bit, let them cool down, and then we'll put eyeballs on them. These are cooled down enough to where we're going to demold. You ready? Well, i got to be honest. Those came out amazing plastic's really soft right now so I'm gonna have to get this into we'll probably have to get this into some kind of a water bath because it's so soft but there you have it so if you look real close you can see the purple pink in the head it's gonna be a little bit tough in this light I wonder if I'm going to change views here. Okay, I'm not going to change views, but I turned that light off underneath that bench. I guess that plays a little havoc with the uh, with the color. But there you go. There you go, guys. See it? So you can see the pink, a little bit of pink on the edge of the gill plate, purple up front. We got the silver belly. We got the chartreuse line. And we got the purple with the tail. And I love this color combo. It's amazing. So let's put that down for a minute, and let's check out one of these going to have to get the edge of this over poured plastic off of here and then we can open it up and check it out so let me just get the ex excess plastic off and you can just push you just push your finger down on the edge of it and that just comes right off very easy okay so here we go guys those came out amazing better than I thought I might pick a different color for the head next time I'll keep the pink on the gill plate but man what a sexy looking bait love the colors came out amazing if I can get that to focus better. There we go. Came out amazing. So, see that pink in the head? You can see the little bit of, or the uh, purple in the head and a little bit of pink in the gill plate there. The black eyes. And what we'll do is we'll put the eyeballs in. So, I'm going to let the, I'm going to demold all these, put them in some water, and cool down, get set up a little bit more, and then I'll come back and we'll put eyeballs on them. But man, I'll tell you, what what a what a good color. Came out better than I thought, actually. So, but there you go. Simple dusting. All you got to do is the fins, the eye, the head, and the gill plates, and you got some amazing looking baits. 
So I'm going to let these cool down. We're going to demold the rest of them. And then we're going to put some eyeballs on them a little bit. I think I've settled on an eye. It took me a while to figure which one I wanted to use, but I've decided to go with this kind of earth tone looking one. So it'll be something that's very natural. And I had some crazy color ones, but I didn't think that they would look as good. So I'm gonna go ahead and use these. So with the eyes, Not bad. Looks really good. I really like the colors. The color scheme is really good. Might look a little bit better in person, obviously. But came out excellent. So there's the AI. And then let's go ahead and do one of the one of the epics. But there you go. So that one's, that one's looking pretty sweet too. Nice natural eyes. And I'll do some, some good footage for you so you guys can see those a little bit better. But, get my hand behind it, the camera focus a little bit better. <laughs> it's having a tough time adjusting right now and I don't know if it's just the lighting or what. There we go. But, really cool bait. I mean, good colors. Really cool, just different. I kind of thought that would, that would be a good color combo, but there's the epic um, pud. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the eyeballs on the rest of these, and then we'll wrap the video up. Okay guys, well that's going to wrap it up for today's video. We made some great looking swim baits. We did some AI 4 inchers and we did some epic puds. And uh, I love it. I love, I'm loving the color. I probably would have done the head a little bit darker or something else. Maybe even a gold or something just to kind of bring that out and hide a little bit more of that color. But it, it blends really well. It gives you kind of a cool effect of different colors. But anyway. But that was a good example today of some basic dusting technique, just how to skin pour with, you know, doing some basic things like coloring in the heads and the gill plate and the fins and, you know, just giving you guys a good example of how that actually works. And then, you know, the process is, is pretty time consuming. I mean, you know, you're heating them up on the griddle and then you're doing the pouring after you do all the dusting and the first pour with the skin pour. I, it just, it gets a little bit chaotic, but well worth the time it, it takes if you're going to try to sell them it's not so much worth the time because it takes a lot of time to make these and you know some people will appreciate it and they will pay the money to do it but you know as far as selling them goes it's pretty hard for me to sell stuff stuff like this so i probably will end up making a lot of these for friends and myself and that kind of thing i, I will sell some on the side but it's going to be so much of a price that it may some people are just going to shy away from it but anyway, we're getting close to 500 subscribers. Really appreciate all you guys' help. Everybody, I appreciate everybody's support, everybody watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. If you have any questions about this process, the technique, 
please reach out to me, comment below. And I'm gonna probably tell you that these baits or some of these baits will be in the 500 subscriber giveaway, which is coming up soon. And we have a ton of stuff to give away. I probably won't show that now, but we will do a separate, a separate video when we reach 500. That will be the video where we actually pick a winner after it airs for probably about a week or so. So stay tuned and remember, keep on baiting.